Right now we're learning <coughs> uh, uh, a series of speeches that were given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1991, also 92 a little bit. Uh, is that right? Yeah. And um, Parshat Vayir, this is Parshat Vayir, it's called Devar Malchut. And most of them speak very, uh, how do you say, explicitly about Mashiach. <clears throat> and what Mashiach is and how Mashiach is. So this week's Torah portion especially <clears throat> has the message of Mashiach. And <clears throat> how so? Because it says, Vayera Lo Hashem, that God appeared to Abraham. And the big accomplishment of Mashiach is going to be that God is going to appear to everybody. <clears throat> like Maimonides says, he brings from Isaiah, that the world will be filled with the awareness of God like water fills the ocean. Water fills the ocean. So it's, everyone is going to feel the truth that God is creating us. And that God is infinitely good. And that the biggest gift that God gives us is responsibility. Everybody is important to God. <clears throat> and that responsibility was revealed in the Torah. For the non-Jews, what's called seven Noahide commandments. For the Jews, all the commandments, the rabbinical commandments, 613 regular commandments, and all the rabbinical commandments. And so we'll, just, we'll feel it. We'll feel the creator. Everyone will feel the most obvious thing in the world, that God is creating us. Now, now we don't feel it, and um, we act accordingly. We act accordingly. It's like a person who is, you know, rich and intelligent and and uh, you know beneficial to mankind, and he's talented and etc. But he's put into uh, he's kidnapped, and his kidnappers tell him that he's he's poor and he's ignorant and he's a fool and he's disgusting. And he's just a bunch of trouble and everybody, you know, is a loser. <laughs> so eventually he starts to really believe it. He doesn't know who he is. And so he starts, really starts to believe it until somebody comes and releases him from captivity. That's the idea of Mashiach. Everyone in the world thinks that they're just sort of here by accident. You know, they just really shouldn't be here. And there's no real big difference between like a human being and a rabbit, or maybe rabbits are even better than human beings. And that we're just a product of, you know, evolution. You know, we just sort of evolved and it just happened to be popped out a human being. And, but that's a lie, it's not so. We're, we're, we've been kidnapped by, you know, society and by, uh, you know, improper ideas and improper education. We're imprisoned by meaningless meaninglessness. <clears throat> so as soon as the whole world starts to see and reveal that, hey, I'm, I'm a creation. I'm being created by God. I'm not the most important thing. There's something infinitely more important to me. And God, that's God and he's creating me. And he's giving me talents and he's giving me prayer. When a person realizes this, it becomes a different person. It becomes a different person. That everything he has and everything that he is <clears throat> is an amazing gift. And, and the giver of the gift is right with us. How do you say? Uh, what's the word? Anyway, he's together with us all the time. I'll think of the word. <clears throat> We're always being a company. Okay, so that's what happened with Abraham. Abraham said, I said that God appeared to Abraham. So we see that it is possible that God can appear to people. And <clears throat> says the Rebbe, the, why did God appear to Abraham? Especially because of the circumcision. Well, after it, it, this, this week's Torah portion starts off with God appearing to Abraham three days after he circumcised himself. So the Rebbe brings the story about the fifth Rebbe of Chabad called Rabbi Shalom Dovber that he was a young boy, four years old, and he came into his grandfather crying, and he said, why doesn't God appear to us? He appeared to Abraham. So he said, <clears throat> if you're 99 years old and you circumcise yourself, so then 
you're fitting to have this revelation. But the fact of the matter is, is that a Jew is called a Jew even if he doesn't circumcise himself. He's fit to be. And what about Jewish women that they don't circumcise themselves? Right, so they're also fit. And eventually the whole world will be fit. That's the whole point. In other words, God wants to appear. Here we go. I'll be there according to this. Now we can understand why the fifth Rebbe of Chabad was crying and what his father answered him. <clears throat> what he, why was he crying? He came into his grandfather and said, why is Mipenei Ma? Why is it? The Nira Hashem, the God appeared to Abraham Avinu, our father, and he didn't appear to us. And what did he answer? The Semach Sedek, when it said that when a righteous Jew, he decides at 99 years old to circumcise himself, so therefore it is proper that God should appear to him. And this is not talking about God appearing to him, but it's talking about what do you have to do in order to be fit, to deserve it, actually, that God should appear. The fact of the matter is, that God appeared to Abraham, <clears throat> namely, <clears throat> the revelation of the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah is God's presence. And <clears throat> it's re resting. This is really in every single Jew. By means of circumcision. That then comes in what's called the holy, godly soul is really, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it really becomes, how do you say, permeates the body. A portion of God from above. And by means of this, it makes in the child eight days old an awareness of God. That it comes down and it permeates even in the physical world. His physical body and the physical world. In other words, God is everywhere. God is creating us all the time. But to actually feel it, it has to be done this circumcision. And it can only be by the Jews. I mean, take an example. <clears throat> television. I don't have a television person. I haven't watched television. I don't know for a very tremendously long time. But I know one thing about a television. A television is it's just a box. It's got all these wires inside of it, tubes, if it has tubes anymore. And it receives waves that are in the air. In other words, the waves are already there. But if you don't have a television, and the television has to be in working order, you don't receive them. And so godliness is everywhere. A Jewish person, he's like the television, it has to be in working order. That's a circumcision. So it just reveals the fact that everything is that the big novelty of Abraham, that God, it says that he appeared to him, was that he actually saw. He saw actually in a revealed way <clears throat> the Shekhinah, God's presence to him. In other words, Abraham actually saw and felt the Creator. That's why the fifth Rebbe of Chabad cried, Why is it that God appeared to Abraham, our father, and he doesn't appear to us? It means to Lanu, to us, we don't see like Abraham saw. I mean, why was he crying? I mean, he, because he knew that there was God, and he knew that God exists, and he knew that God is creating us, and he knew that God is everywhere. And he knew that God's presence can be revealed and wants to be revealed. So why is it that it got revealed to Abraham and not to us? In other words, the, this, when the Rebbe the, was already four years old, he already knew for sure God exists. He knew for sure that God is everywhere. The problem he asked was, why isn't it revealed to us? Why are we thinking about ourselves all the time? Why can't we get the whole picture proper? But Ofen Shagam Anonir, he wants it that we should also see like Abraham saw. <clears throat> now, just a, a very short, I mean, a, 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 a parenthetical thing, which I always bring in. When a person sees God, what happens to him? When you see God, while you're seeing God, you're very happy. You're very, how do you say, empowered to do things, to to. to 
to fix things, to do what God wants. God wants this world to be perfect. I'm going to do everything. Nothing's going to stop me. You only want to have a positive effect on the world, and the world has no negative effect on you. You realize you're here just to fix the world. But as soon as that revelation goes away, and then, how do you say, all hell breaks loose. That's what happened in Mount Sinai. When the Jews saw God at Mount Sinai, they were all, oh, we're, we're freaking out. We love you, God. Nasev and Ishma. But 40 days later, when Moses, they thought Moses was going to come down, and everybody said, fellows, the game is over, right? That was the first round. Now we got the second round. Now, now, up to now, God's been the boss. Now we're the boss. Everybody said, all right, man, now you're talking. This is good. Right now, a whole different type of happiness. So God appearing to a person does not in any way interfere with a person's free will. But it just, while you have that impression that you're being created, and it, the, 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 the impression that it leaves on you, <clears throat> it makes it a little bit easier to do what God wants and a, more ridiculous not to do what God wants. But as soon as you that feeling goes away, then anything goes. The Al Pizeh, according to this, Yum Tok Diok, we can understand. Why is it that God appeared to Abraham, our father, Abraham Avinu, and not to us? That even though that certainly the, the Rebbe, when he was four years old, he knew and he appreciated and he understood the greatness of Abraham, our father, compared to him. Nevertheless, what did he say? He said, but Abraham is called our father. He is our father that each and every Jew come everything that he has and all the qualities that we have, including also the quality that comes by means of this, that at 99 years old, he decided to start over all again and to circumcise himself to every single one of his children after him to all the generations without looking <clears throat> And who that Jew is or what the Jew is, nevertheless, he inherits, Abraham gave him everything. He's our father. Okay, and therefore, but often in the same way that God appeared to Abraham, our father. So if he's our father and he inherited this everything, so he should also appear to us. Hainu, namely, Shagam Anu. Also, we should also see in a revealed way godliness all the time. We should see and feel the creator. Alzei, Shilo, and that's what the Semak Tzedek, that's what his grandfather repeated, re, re, replied to him, Shekadei, that an orderly rose to see, Etid Galut, the revelation, and feel, see and feel that God is really creating me, the poil, the Giloi, and he cares about me. <clears throat> and he's accompanying me. As Tzorichim Liot, Ru'uyim, you have to be fit. You have to be proper. It's the same thing. You want to receive television waves, you got to bring a television. You have to bring a television into the room. And it, it, that's not enough. The room, it has to be electricity. And that's not enough. The television has to be in working order. And, of course, you have to turn it on. The Rebbe once said about himself that his thing is just, he's just a, a street a lamp lighter. He just turns everybody on, like the Belgian Shem He just pr presses the button. But everybody has everything. But <clears throat> one of the things you have is you have to fix yourself up. Therefore, by means you have to serve God, you have to change yourself. Come on, Abram, just like Abraham, Shabbat God Almilus, because of the greatness of his service, even when he was 99 years old, he decided that he has to circumcise himself. When you do that, every moment is brand new, and you accept every moment, new responsibility. I mean, I was thinking about that this morning also. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of people, that religious people, and they pray like the morning prayer, and they, they, they pray very quickly. They come to show synagogue, and they put on the tefillin, and they pray, and they finish, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they finish the whole thing. Okay, that's good. I mean, it certainly is better than nothing, right? I'm, and I'm, I'm sure that that's part of their motivation. You know, he puts on tefillin, he's saying the prayers, he's opening the book. It's okay, what more do you expect from it? <clears throat> so you can say, okay, good, you know, you, you got a good point. Can't expect any more from a person like that. But it's, it's, a, it's a different attitude. It's a different way of looking at the world. If you look at the world, like 
everything I am, everything I have, my whole life, my whole being <clears throat> is a gift from God. I owe God infinitely, infinitely more than what I'm repaying him. Wait, I, I should be just thankful to God jumping around the whole entire day. Just thank you, God. Well, thank you and everything you do. And I don't do that, right? Everything I do, thinking about God all the time, definitely not. <clears throat> so when you come to pray in the morning, it's like saying, you know, listen, God's lucky I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing something, you know. Or looking at saying, listen, well, you know, I would really like to do more, but what can I do? You know, I haven't got that much time. I have things I have to do in life. God wants me to do things. He wants me to have a job. He wants me to have a family. He wants me to so I have to do these things. But on the other hand, the, the more that I can give to the creator, the better. All right. <clears throat> Where did I get this idea? I mean, I'll tell you this idea. I, I had to make a long trip yesterday because I, I, I was my son and, the, and my, my grandson put on to film. And maybe I'll send you pictures. Very touching. Well, it's beautiful. Anyway, so coming back. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I get sort of car sick if I read things. So I try reading, but I get. Anyway, so I'm jumping around watching these things. So I like music. Anyway, so I jumped around. <clears throat> And I saw that there's a famous uh, saxophone player called John Coltrane. And he wrote, what was it? What was it? He wrote an, an album which was called, um, um, I can't, can't remember what it is, Infinite Sublime Love or something like that. Anyway, he wrote it and he said, this is a, a thanks to God. Thanks to God. He didn't talk about any religion, didn't talk about anything. Thanks to God that he gave me all of my, I'm not a big jazz aficionado, but I mean, I did listen to it, you know, a good amount of it. And it, I have to admit, it was pretty impressive, the fact of the matter is, but I don't know, maybe you won't like it. Just the idea that a regular human being, a talented person, yes, talented person. In music, he was talented. In actual physical life, he was a very, let me say, uh, challenged person, let's say. In any case, so he wrote this beautiful thing, and it's all devoted to God. To God, he did not put it to any person or anything, any you know, religious aspect of God. The creator, thank you, creator, for giving me this talent that I have. And that's ideally what everybody should do. <clears throat> everybody should feel that there's a creator that's creating me and giving me talents. Okay, anyway, I just threw that in. You can throw it out if you want to, but I thought it was, I was pretty impressed by it. Uh, so therefore, in order to be fit for this, you have to be Avram, Abraham, so therefore, you have to do this very difficult work of working and changing yourself and feeling obligated to God all the time. That, by the way, I think is one of the meanings of tshuva. Tshuva means to return. Just returning to God what you owe him. And what happens if you don't return to God what you owe him? You see, the world still goes, but the life is a little bit less, how do you want to call it, the... it's, it's a little more mean and small if you don't, Think about the creator. It becomes a little more selfish and a little more, how do you say, uh, cruel. I mean, life is pretty cruel, there's no doubt about it. But at least you think, listen, there's some, some, there's something going on over here. Something good is going to come out of all this business. Something good is going to come out. I don't have to be so worried. And I don't have to also join the negative forces and start, you know, God forbid, people that commit suicidal. I'll say on this that some ascetic said, in order to, to be fit, you want to fit be, then you have to do these things. Okay, Alpis, according to this, movements understood also what we can say of a year of love and service of every single Jew. When a Jew learns and in the Torah, and he reads this week's Torah portion that God appeared to Abraham. Torah, he has, he must, they done, no. Shakavana, the intention is mainly that he's talking about, not about Abraham, he's not talking about a big rabbi, he's talking about me and you. If you read it, it's talking to you. Shari, el Avram. It doesn't say that he, God appeared to Abraham. It says vayera a love that God appeared to him. Right? Vayera a love Hashem. That's how the be begins. Lioto bano because we, our children, offspring, direct relatives, inheritors of Abraham, our father. And we have been brought into the covenant of Abraham. Now he's talking about Jews over here. 
Kamo Avram, just like Abram, our father, Vayera Lov Hashem, Bishvil, Amila, for the sake of, because of the circumcision, God appeared to him. And this is known, when you know, when you, Jew, read these words, and you know that you are a direct descendant of Abraham, and that God is speaking to you, and he wants to appear to you, and eventually God's going to appear to the whole entire world, but it has to be the Jews first. When you know this, you more awareness about Chuka, then you'll have a tremendous desire yourself to see the revelation of God on you. You'll feel your creator. You'll feel that God is keeping me alive. Now that's not religious. That's just reality. Kafi like Shalom and like we learned from the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, that when he, even when he was a small child, sorry, he he needed Lishtokek, the desire to see, <clears throat> to see in a revealed way, and he even cried. Because he wanted to see the revelation of God. And then the, again, what happens when you see the revelation of God? You just see who you really are. You just see your abilities. I don't know if you've ever seen this. You ever see there's these videos of, of people, usually it's older people. It's not a babies. Babies are different. When they, they put something in their, they, they're deaf. And they do some sort of a thing and that they can hear. Have you ever seen that? It's more than if people see. I don't know if I saw this before. It could be even seeing. I think I saw there was one guy, I think, with the, that he couldn't, he was colorblind. Anyway. So they put this little thing in their ear, and the you know a grown person, they say, okay, we, we did this uh, process. Now we're going to test it, okay, Mr. Jones. We're going to test it. See if you can hear anything. Ready? Now I'm beginning to turn it on. Here's your son speaking to you. Hi, Daddy. Hi. He goes, oh, oh, he starts to cry. He begins crying. What is he crying for? What's the guy? He's so happy. He has a new sense. He's he's more alive that's what happens when you feel god you feel god suddenly you're more alive you're happier people used to go to the holy temple they used to feel this they used to get this that's why the holy temple is so important you'd feel that judaism judaism is a religion for sure it's a religion but the, the basis of it the the, the the all the the, the ceremonies and the, the commandments and things we do we're doing it because the creator of the universe is telling us right now to do it's an expression of life. It's not an expression of religion. Religion is the one that you get out of the world. This is an expression of life, of reality. And life is happiness. Huh? But I certainly, everything, to be royal, as far as the circumcision goes. I mean, if this John Coltrane, if he would feel all the time what he felt when he was writing these things, he wouldn't, I mean, he was a drug addict. Da, 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 da. I mean, I understand that he was a, you know, a person that had, how do you say, morals and everything like that, but the world is very frustrating and difficult. If everyone would feel <clears throat> the feeling, the, the, the gratitude and the feeling to God, if he himself would have felt it all the time, then he wouldn't have, he would have lived a much longer life. You know, for sure. And the same way with everybody. If these Hamas people, if they would feel what God really is, they would have respect for life. They wouldn't rejoice in cutting off children's heads and playing volleyball with the, with the, with the whatever it is, soccer. They wouldn't rejoice in, in dipping their hands in blood of people. I think, maybe not. I mean, there's some people that, that want to go against God. That's called a mullik. There's some people that the more they know about God and how good life is, the more they hate God and the more they hate life. I think the Nazis were the, 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 it could be these Hamas guys are the same thing. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad news, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to judge anybody, but um, I would like to, I would really like to get some of these guys and judge them. It would, it would be, bring, bring me tremendous satisfaction that they, <laughs> and they, get, they should get every, uh, they should receive on themselves. I mean, they should just be taken out of the world. That's all. The world, there's no place for people like that in the world. They shouldn't, they have no right to breathe air. They're stealing air. Huh? And there's all these people in the college campuses that, that support them. So, you know, in some ways, maybe they're worse than they are, these people, because at least they're doing it in hot blood. They're doing it there in giant. 
But these people on the college campuses and other places, you know, their logic, they're, you know, the logic, thinking logically, you know, it's not that they're enjoying it. They just, yeah, Jews really should get killed, you know, they're really just. This is a, um, <clears throat> if God would appear to the world, then I think that would pretty much divide it up. There's some people who would tr be tremendously happy because they love life. And the people that hate life, they don't, they wouldn't want to be alive. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to be in a world that's good. Okay, in any case, God is going to appear and must appear to every single Jew who in a way to the, in the, in the, in the physical body as Briti Vesarchem Brit Olam. I made an eternal covenant with you that the, the body with all the 248 limbs and the 365 uh, blood vessels is Chadura should be permeated with holiness and godliness in a way that Brit Olam, we feel an eternal connection with God every moment for all time but and also not just the Jewish bodies but also the places where they are especially the land of Israel Yerusha the Eretz inheriting the land of Israel that by me and, and they got that because of the circumcision everything they do in the world will be permeated with making the whole world into the land of Israel the call prati and yanim, the chelkab olam, no matter where you are, to make the physical world into a holy place. The halia de abodazu, by means of this, is made a vessel, a fitting vessel, right? A fit, the whole world becomes a fitting vessel. That's the whole thing that the Rebbe, the four year old Rebbe, was crying about. Is I want, how can I make myself a vessel to re reveal God more than I understand and I believe in Him? Believing in my belief, but I don't see, feel God the same way I feel the world. Says you want to do that, but you're a love Hashem. Then what you have to do is just change yourself a little bit. Whether revealing to yourself or whether revealing in your portion in the world and in the whole entire world would, to make the world into a dwelling, a dwelling place for the God. The Indian said this is especially is when <clears throat> this year when uh, the, uh, the, this Torah portion falls on. The 18th day of Marcheshman. Now it happens to be this year it falls on the 20th day of Marcheshman, which that's what he's going to, the main point is 20th day of Marcheshman. What happened to the 20th day of Marcheshman? On the 20th day of Marcheshman, the fifth Rebbe, the one who was crying here, the story that we had about this four year old child crying, well, he was born on the 20th day of Marcheshman. 20th day. He especially is connected to Mashiach because he, the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, he was the one that made yeshiva, Torah institutions where they learn the ideas of Hasidut. They learn, and the Hasidut is called Torah to Mashiach, the teaching of Mashiach. Chai, this is Chai Marcheshman. <clears throat> it's not Chai Marcheshman. It's going to be 20th day of Marcheshman. Okay, but the 18th day of Marcheshman is going to be when? This Thursday, I guess. And this indicates on true life, which is in every Jew, the soul, the life of the soul. The soul is a part of God from above as it's drawn down into a physical body. That's Chai. The 18th day of Marcheshman, like I say, one of the Rebbe's gave the speech, the 18th day of Marcheshman was Shabbat. And this day it's not. But in any case, it's a preparation for the 20th day. That's the main thing. This, this year, Shabbat will be on the 20th. This indicates on the revelation of godliness also in physical things in the world, that in them... We will begin on Chodesh Marcheshvan. Chodesh Marcheshvan, that's this month, the month that comes after Tishrei, when there were all these holidays and holy days, and the most of the time was in the, the intermediate days and preparing for Yom Kippur and preparing for Sukkot. Preparing. So Tishrei was a holy month. The month of Marcheshvan is a totally mundane month. There's no holidays in it at all. Al Manat, in order to draw down holiness into regular physical things. What's called the 39 different categories of work that are forbidden on Shabbat. These are things which you do occupy yourself on, these 39 categories of work, plowing and reaping and writing and erasing and digging. And all these things are forbidden on Shabbat, but in the weekdays we do them. That it should be recognized when we do the 39 works in the weekdays that is in order to make from the world a dwelling place for God. Just like it was in the tabernacle or in the holy temple. 
where do we learn these 39 categories of work that are forbidden? Because these 39 categories of work were <clears throat> 39 types of work that were necessary in building the tabernacle in the desert. And it was forbidden to build a tabernacle on Shabbat. They couldn't do these. On, from there, they learned what's forbidden on Shabbat. Because it doesn't say clearly in the Torah what is forbidden on Shabbat. It just says you have to keep the day. Al-Pizeh, according to this, it's understood the connection between Vayera to the 18th day of Mar Cheshvan, the revelation of Vayera, a love, the circumcision is drawn down into the physical world, into the body. Chai, Chai means to be alive. And also working in the physical things, Mar Cheshvan, that's this month of Mar Cheshvan, physical month, that it should be recognized in a revealed way, godliness everywhere. And continuing to this, especially we're talking about the 20th day of Mar Cheshvan. That's this Shabbos is going to be the 20th. 20 is the, the first letter, Chaf is the first letter of Keter, crown. 20 is the number of Chaf, the gematria of Keter. Keter, the Esrim, the number Esrim, Esrim, that is the numerical value of the word Keter. Keter is 620. Esrim is 500, 620. Esrim is the, is the, the word, not the Esrim, but Esrim is 620, and Keter crown is 620. Gematria. This is the highest level of godliness, the crown of godliness. Above all of the other ten spherot, <clears throat> this level is drawn down and revealed, and it permeates in the mundane things in the month of Mar Cheshvan in a deeper way, and it's drawn down by Yehra love in a way that can be appeared. That's why the Rebbe, fifth Rebbe of Chabad, that he was born on the 20th day, the Keter, the crown, the 20th day, Esrim is the numerical value of Keter, crown, that he was the one that was crying. He wanted God to be revealed everywhere. Even in the most mundane things in the month of Cheshvan. This is revealed to the revelation of the essence of God, which is above any level. That's the Keter. In order to reveal the highest levels of godliness, it can only be revealed in the lowest places. That's the way God, that's why God made the world so that he would be revealed in this world in a way that he couldn't be revealed in the upper worlds. And that's his level of Keter, the 20th day. So that's the whole idea of the circumcision, the whole idea of Chabad Hasidut, the whole idea of Mashiach, and the whole idea of God being revealed to every single Jew, and from them every single human being in the world, as we'll continue, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's do the Yom Yom, and I'll tell you a story. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-